What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Hey, do you nerd? She does, let me tell you. For toy conventions. Oh, yeah. Hey, nerdlings. It's Jasmine from Nerdy Blazing Cosplays, and you're watching Do You Nerd? Are you living in a material world? I am very much a material girl. I'm a material girl. Er, no, boy. No, no. We recently had a good time at a toy convention located pretty close to us, about an hour drive away. Yep. This is the... Joplin Collectors Expo. Now, they do center primarily on toys, but there are a yeah, lot do. of crafts, a lot of homemade stuff. You're bound to see some fun cosplay, yes. both walking around, and then, uh, of course, they do have a cosplay contest. There's already multiverse shenanigans. <laughs> They also have some different collectibles that you don't always see at a lot of other conventions. I was noticing a lot of sports cards, actually. Yeah. Now, I never really got into collecting sports cards, but I did love to collect comic book cards, especially anything to do with Marvel. Isn't that what got you into comics? That is exactly it, yeah. <laughs> Reading about the characters, their little bios on the back of the cards, I was like, I, I gotta know more about these guys. And I went down that comic book rabbit hole. But that could happen easily with uh, the sports cards, you know, learning about these different teams, the different players. So it's kind of cool to see that, you know, different, uh, different collectible outlet at a convention. Got a hold of him? Oh no. And the toys. Oh, the wow. Toys. So before we jump into some of the pickups, this is one of those smaller conventions. They actually hold this in an elementary school. So that has some pros and cons to it. One of the cons we noticed was parking. Parking's always an issue. Not yeah. a lot of uh, elementary kids drive to school I generally. So, you know, there's, <laughs> there's less parking than maybe at a high school or something else. But the space that they have at this school is tremendous yes. because they're utilizing the cafeteria space. They're using the gymnasium space. The they library. even have uh, yeah, some game tournaments like Smash going yeah. on in the library. And they even use the hallways Which connecting is, these. Yeah, really nice because the gym and the cafeteria are completely separate from each other. So in the walk from one to the other, they filled up space in the hallway. If you go to a convention like this, make sure you are checking the whole thing out. You don't want to miss half of it because there are some cool things to find, like people. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's Batman. I saw them at MoGameCon. <laughs> we have not seen these people since Mo Game Con. Oh my gosh, it's oh, been so long. Not even a month ago. <laughs> Something else that's really neat that this convention likes to do, and it's free, it doesn't cost anything, when you um, come in and get your ticket, they give you a raffle ticket. And you fill your name and phone number yeah. out, and was it, I th believe it's once an hour, they call two names out of the raffle ticket. You don't have to pay anything, and everybody who's an exhibitor there puts something from their booth up for for grabs. I always thought that was really neat. You don't even have to pay for the raffle tickets. So yeah. That's really cool that they do that. That extra little bit. That's always fun. Who doesn't want a chance to win some cool free swag anyway? Mm -hmm.
meeting up with people that we are getting to know at these local conventions is always fun. Hey guys, how are you doing? Good, how are you? And checking them out is always fun. Yeah, now these were uh, from a salesman that was selling these toys. Uh, they never actually made it to the store uh, because these are cap guns and it's at the time where, you know, parents didn't like their kids play with guns. So they never were produced. These are one of a kind. Those are really cool. Yeah. <laughs> the cap guns actually work. Obviously, we love the stuff that we find, and you can really find some good deals here. Uh, stuff that you didn't know about, obviously, and things that you didn't know that you were looking for. We fall into that trap all too often. I think you made out pretty well this time I around. I did. I got some good stuff this time. The first one I got was I had to get me an OG Winter Soldier. I don't actually have the old school Winter Soldier for my collection. I have the from the Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I like the actor. He's kind of cute. And, you know, everybody needs a little Winter Soldier in their life. Plus, he's got an accessory that Spider-Man loves. You have a metal arm? That is awesome, dude. I know I normally go for my Marvel Legends, but I do have a bit of DC love in here. <laughs> and I picked up the Huntress because I thought she just looked really cool. So, she, obviously she's going uh, to go to a pool tournament. Wow. <laughs> got a pool cue with her. I notice <laughs> that she has totally dressed herself to uh, match Hawkeye as far as like color scheme. I think that's what a lot of design. Children. Yeah because I really don't know anything about the Huntress. In fact I haven't had to ask you who she was but her outfit is really cool. I do like the fact that she has a vinyl cape on her like a rubber vinyl. Yeah and there's a lot of movement in that too. That's impressive. It's a nice thin vinyl. Her hair's blowing in the wind, so you need that movement of the cape. Something interesting to note is her gun does not leave her hand. Oh, it's a permanent, huh? Interesting. I can't stand up. My gun hand's too heavy. <laughs> well, his gun's too big. Now, I picked up another action figure. This is actually a custom action figure. This is a quote unquote, Lady Venom. Now what they did was they took White Spider Woman and put a Venom head on her to make a Lady Venom because to my knowledge, and nerdlings correct me if I'm wrong because I would love to have one, I don't believe that Marvel Legends has yet done a Lady Venom. So I would love to have one. So I went ahead and bought this one because um, I want a Lady Venom. So I didn't mind having a custom one. I think Eddie wants a Lady Venom too. Oh. Hi Eddie. Whoa. <laughs> oh no. Another fun action figure I got is a huge <laughs> one. I got Man Spider here. The only issue with him is one of his thumbs, thumb pincer, is broken off. But other than that, he seems pretty well intact. I don't know if this one ever came with any kind of accessories. But his articulation is a little different than normal. You have your typical like head movement that you would normally have, but then each arm kind of moves like the top. It looks like they have arms, the most range of yeah, motion. They've got the ball joints. The rest of them just kind of rotate. And then his bottom arms have the ball joints as well. So his elbows and his knees do not move at all. They don't even really rotate. And his feet and wrists don't move like a normal Marvel Legends either. And all he really has is kind of a twisty motion. He doesn't even have that, that solar flex. So his torso is pretty stationary. And then his legs just move back and forth. They're not ball jointed. Well, that's cool that there's so much movement in there as far as trying to pose him. Yeah. You know, they could have left those extra arms being very static or just in a ever pose. There's still a little bit of humanity left in him, like his top arms. You can still see that they're kind of fingers. You can still see a little bit of mouth and eye, human eye in there mixed with all of the rest of the spider-ness that he is. 
Well, enjoy your house. Well, my dear, what did you pick up? Well, a uh, business card here, Time Honored Productions. This is Jared Vaughn. Now, he is an author and publisher, so he's got some reading material out there. We have met up with him before. He loves to have a lot of fun with a little bit of cosplay when he's mm -hmm. at his table. Mm -hmm. He also has a fantastic set of Back to the Future related things. First of all, he wanted to hook us up with some postcards. We made sure to go ahead and buy them because these are too much fun. They're postcards from across time of all of Marty's adventures. So you've got the iconic 1985 Welcome to Hill Valley. And you've got Marty walking along there. And then of course you have 1955 Greetings from Hill Valley. Although I don't know what's up with the vest. I guess he jumped ship. And then straight from the future, or past, now that it's all in the past, you have <laughs> greetings from Hill Valley, the city of the future, all the way in 2015. Well, now Marty's in this one too. You have one from the Old West, Howdy, from Hill Valley, the greatest little town in the West. Yeah. See, you want to be a little more careful about what you do when you time travel. I mean... It's not like I'm letting everyone know. I've got Gray Sports Almanac. Complete sports statistics from 1950 to 2000. I can't lose. And in case I do, it's all right. I got the receipt so I can take it back. Take it right back to the future. Marty! I can't lose. Marty, up here. This is just a nice blank page stationary, but it is crammed with facts, figures, records, and statistics. This authoritative book gives you all the information you need to know. Not exactly light reading. <laughs> Hardly recreational reading material, Marty. Well, hey, Doc, and what's the harm in bringing back a little info on the future? The tiles haven't even been punched out. Picked myself up another little action figure. I got me a splinter, but this is a flocked splinter from the movies. And the f interesting thing about him, he still has all of his flock. Yeah, I normally. It's been rubbed off. If it were my toy, that have been rubbed off by now. <laughs> but I'm actually surprised. He is in really, really good condition for his age. He still has his coat. So I think, did Splinter have a staff or something? I, I feel like he did. Probably the only thing that this toy is missing. He learned by watching his master how to do Kung Fu. I also picked me up Mario Mario. That is an awesome figure. I've been trying to find these. I would love to have found Luigi because one, I love Luigi. And two, uh, really love the actor playing Luigi. Mario Mario's fine. I'll just have to wait for Luigi Mario. And you got in a tremendous deal on him. I did. I got him, him for three bucks. Because <laughs> generally, whenever we see these figures, they're a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. And he's mostly in good he's shape. He's in really good shape. He has a bit of what I would consider play battle damage. Like his hands and his feet looks like um, have been played with. Other than that, he's in really great shape. He's got those... Those jumping boots, what were they called, do you remember? I don't, I don't, I try not to remember too much about that movie. Oh
Even though there were toys everywhere, we were seeing a lot of video game things. Yeah. So not like a lot of games per se. Yeah. You might see one every now and then, but plug and plays and handhelds, yes. uh, especially like anything with an LCD screen or mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. those were coming into play a lot. And we happened to find the Tommytronic Pac-Man. So the <laughs> unit that looks like a UFO, a design like this, you could only have gotten away with in the eighties. Unfortunately, this top sticker is pretty faded. The screen has some scuffing to it. That's kind of to be expected. The rest of it really isn't beat up all that badly. The other nice thing is it has its battery door. Yes. That's usually one of the things, if you find old electronics from the 80s and 90s, they usually lose those battery doors pretty quick. Now there is a little bit of corrosion over those tabs, so maybe cleaning those up will help. And in either event, as long as we can get the right voltage, he does have a little power port in the back. So even if batteries aren't the way to go, it may still work with that. Good morning. Waga 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 I got me a Wanda from the Avengers Endgame. This is one of my favorite scenes because she exerts so much amazing power in that scene. And, you know, I, I've talked about it before, but she almost <laughs> beat Thanos. He cheated, but this was the scene leading up to that, and I absolutely love it. Not to mention her, um, her eyes glow in the dark. Oh, about. that's right. Yeah, it did have a glow-in-the-dark element. And Funkos seem to always love being bobbleheads for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of comics, I picked up an issue of Batman White Knight Presents Harley Quinn. And this has a special drawn cover by Caesar Crawford. We've seen him at a couple of the local events here. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he was at one of the library cons. We got to talk to him during the free comic book day yes. of 2021. And of course, here at the toy convention, he was actually just finishing this cover up and I really loved what he had done here. Mm -hmm. Harley looks great. The coloring is spectacular and he was kind enough to even sign it before turning it over once we bought it. So that is a great piece to have in the collection. I mean, come on, it's, it's Harley Quinn. She's adorable, crazy and adorable, in fact. Most crazy is pretty adorable. Let me sign it. I found me a little Starlight. Starlight Express! Starlight Express! And I had this when I was a kid and obviously, you know, don't know what happened to it. So I have been looking for one of these for a little while now. And I want to find my Rainbow Bright that I had with her, but that's another hunt. One of the things that I loved about this horse when I was a kid, aside from the hair, I just, I loved playing with the rainbow yarn hair, but was the hooves. They're like a, a velvety kind of. It's not flocked, but it's just velvety. And I can remember like watching TV or movies and just like rubbing the, the hooves for some reason. Now my hooves, because I rubbed them, did kind of <laughs> rub off a bit. But I loved that and I also loved this. It made <laughs> hoof noises. What kind of cool horse plushie? I mean, that's just a genius idea. All the hair is there, hasn't been trimmed or cut. So yeah, I was really happy with this. Starlight Express. And I got one more plushie. 
from Rainbow Bright. <laughs> I got Lurky. I was also impressed with the shape that he is in because they're both from, I believe it's 83. There's like the fur isn't matted or anything like that. He's not dirty. And the thing that is really impressive is he's got white sneakers. Yeah. And they are in amazing shape. They're not yellowed. Usually fabric like this will uh, yellow with that's age. That's what I was thinking. But they're not dirty. They're not yellowed. I mean, it was almost like it was in a plastic bag or something. The funny thing is, is I have never actually seen this plushie before. <laughs> I didn't know it existed. I knew about Rainbow Bright and Starlight and Twink and all the other little accessory friends and everything. But I didn't know that this plushie existed. So this was the very first time I'd ever seen it. And the funny thing is, is... And the booth right across from this one had one of these in the box. And I was like, what are the odds? Yeah, you never <laughs> saw it before, and now there's two of them. He looks like a like a, a dust bunny to me. I wonder if that's what he was supposed to be. Like yeah. if that was his initial design. Yeah, I don't know. Introducing the world of Rainbow Bright, Starlight, and Lucky. It's sold separately. I'm Rainbow Bright, and I have the power of the rainbow to make everybody happy. I'm Lucky, and the cat make me happy. With my purple star and my horse, Starlight, wow. I can make you happy and bright. Yeah. <laughs> Starlight, Rainbow Bright, and Lucky are each sold separately. The world of Rainbow Bright is new by Mattel. <laughs> Dice roller. It's an economicon. That's a dice tower as well. Yeah, that's what I was telling yeah, him. I said yeah. the dice roller. Yep. That, that is fun. fun. I, I like that one. That was great. And then they've got the book from Hocus Pocus. Well, there was a table that caught my eye immediately. This gentleman had a very, very impressive collection of some old school and unique consoles. Now, there was a virtual boy there in case you're looking for one of those. That was actually what caught, us, caught our eye because it stood up and we saw it from across the room. Well, the thing that really drew me in were some of the Japanese systems. He had a Super Famicom. He had a Famicom with the disc system. I was interested in. There was a Zelda Game & Watch, but I just wasn't ready to take a plunge at that price. But I really, really, really want that for the collection. But you eyeballing. The Sharp Twin. It's a pretty red. I got a thing for reds. <laughs> it's Famicom red. <laughs> there you go, well, yeah. You have this red. Oh, oh, you think so? It needs to match. <laughs> The thing that I did jump on though, the Famicom Sharp Twin System. This fun little unit was put out in 1986. It only hit the Japanese market, of course, because of the Famicom and the disc system. This was supposed to be a nice little all-in-one. You've got your cartridge slot up top, and then you've got the disc system in the front. So it's very handy. One thing to note though is the controllers are hardwired into it just like with the Famicom. So there's of course that issue. Also, I don't have any disk system games, so I can't test, and neither could he as he didn't have any, to see if the rubber band is still any good in the disk slot system. Fortunately, things with like cartridges back in the day, oh, come on, they're beasts. You have to pretty much try to make them not work for them to not work anymore. So I do need to get some hookups for this. It looks like we have a pretty standard composite outputs here. And then we just have to make sure we get the right voltage and it is DC, not AC. He was very, 
very keen on making sure I knew that. Uh, the price that he had on this, we talked back and forth and uh, finally got it down to a price that I was a lot more happy with. Did you get it for 110? What part of your body did you sell? I reckon he sold one of his livers. But don't worry, he'll be able to get by with one. That is a sweet deal, man. That's like, that's nearly like half price what he was selling it for. That That's really good. And hopefully he will check out this video and see all of the stuff in this room and know that it is in a great forever home and he doesn't have to worry about it. You know, it's it's good. It's going to get some play time. It's going to get some show off time. And uh, I tell you what, that Game & Watch would get some play time and show off time in here too. Wink. <laughs> One last fun little tidbit of this is this was a kind of a rare instance where Nintendo was working with another electronic company. Again, Sharp. Yes. And if you look at this, Sharp actually pretty much removed all traces of Nintendo from this system. Honestly, when I saw it, I didn't think it was an actual Nintendo system. I thought it was kind of like one of like like a Retron 5 or something. It does have the Famicom name right here raised on the front, but yeah, Nintendo not so much. And I believe it even goes as far as the boot up screen for some of the discs removes that Nintendo. Really? Now, do you know what these ports on the side are for? I believe that this one at least could be a controller port. It really looks like some of the, uh, the joystick ports mm -hmm. that you would see on PC. So it might be something co that could be compatible with this. This one over here, it you got like me. <laughs> Fortunately, it's got a little slider door, so we can just close that in and ignore oh, look, it. Oh, it doesn't exist. <laughs> now, does this one have the microphone in the con in the controller like the regular Famicom? You know, as I was talking to him, he said no, it didn't. But it looks like it does on this number two controller. However, we'll have to test and see if that is actually the case or not. If it is, some Poles voices on Legend of Zelda are going to be shouted at. Because Poles voice doesn't like loud noises. So no mamashine. The last pickup that I got was literally the last pickup of the day, and we made a new friend there. We had a lot of fun chatting with this unmarried couple. They were nerdy just like us. And she makes earrings out of like miniature pieces of food, I guess you could call them. <laughs> yeah, it's a lunchable a little pack of turkey. So this lovely lady here makes them. Hi, <laughs> I'm Hannah. Um, you can find me on TikTok as Duff the Unicorn. Um, and I, I like to wear tacky things. And um, I, people on TikTok are asking if I would sell the tacky things. So this is our second round of doing that. Um, and it's really fun. I like to buy the mini brands. Um, I work for Walmart and sometimes it's like, um, I get a Lunchable and a mini brand and it's like having a Happy Meal. And it like, you know, it helps, it helps the Karen, Karen-ness of my job, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's all sorts of silly stuff. I picked up a couple. I got a laughing cow because I love eating that cheese. The thing that actually drew me to her booth in the first place was the Lunchable earrings. Because one, I do love Lunchables, but there's just something really cute about this miniature. Because I mean, they are authentic. Like it literally looks like you took a shrink ray and shrunk them down. Because I'm like, even on the back, there's the nutrition and all of the ingredients and everything. So I also got holy guacamole. Because one, it's fun to say holy guacamole. And I love guacamole. Holy like guacamole. Holy guacamole. And then the last thing I got, because who doesn't want to make themselves a nice turkey sandwich? And I really liked this one because the packaging is clear and you can literally see the little turkey in there. If I ever see them at a convention again, you better believe I'll be getting some more of these earrings because they're just so much fun. The other neat thing about this couple was she had a fanny pack on full of little tiny dinosaurs. Fanny DeVito. Um, oh fanny That's DeVito. He's, he's, a little, he's been a little rained on. He's a little dirty right now. Uh, but I like to give folks, like, I don't, again, I don't have answers why life is so lifelike, but I have a, I, you can have a dinosaur and that helps. So I think that's the one for you. <laughs> really, I'm really feeling this is your guy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Well, I guess I keep, I keep in your pocket. I thought that was kind of neat and that, and she does that anywhere she goes. She said she just always takes them with her. 
So that was a lot of fun and really adorable. And the other thing that she did, um, she said she doesn't do this very often, but we were talking about muscle men because she had taken some muscle men and turned those into earrings. But she asked me if I knew about the female version of the muscle men. But these were like the muscle men, but I'd they were girls. I'd never heard of the cuties. I'd heard of the muscle men. Right, well, it's a weird thing. And so again, I don't want to sell it, but like I've met a nerd, you're a nerd. <laughs> And so she has decided to, when she makes a connection with someone, to hand them this old packaging. She said, because there's something fun about the old packaging, and then let you pick out one. And these ones, these are called Everyday Dream Girls. There was like a like a rock star set, and there was like a, like a wrestler set or something. Yeah. Yeah. These were Everyday Dream Girls. I don't know, I'm kind of feeling the, uh, the mohawk chick. Yeah. Which is weird because I don't, you know, not into bohawks or anything, but gotta go with yeah, gut. gotta go with your gut, so yeah. you go with the mohawk. Well, that is so cool. Thank you very much. Well, I'm so glad I got to meet is, you. I don't know why, but I was drawn to this punk rock um, mohawky chick, so I just thought that was really cool. We had a lot of fun chatting. It was just a very fun uh, conversation, um, and I just, I really hope to run into them again. They were, they were just a lot of fun. Boy conventions are so fun because you meet people who yes, are, you know, do. other nerds that, like, it's just fun. And I was like, you know what? When somebody, like, you get it. I was yeah. like, I'm going to share that moment. I'm glad, I'm glad we had yes, that I'm moment. Yes, I'm very good. Thank you very much. That was so much fun. All right. Well, there you go. Again, please check out these small local conventions. Show them some support. Go talk to the vendors, get to know them. You're going to make some new friends. You're going to find some cool deals. You're going to find stuff that you forgot all about from your childhood. You're going to find stuff that you didn't know you needed, like a giant scary spider man thing, uh, you know, that m not even Mario is going to be able to help you with because you know, Pac-Man aliens came and took him away. And, you know, there's just no changing the past. And if you're trying to, well, that's crazy. So guys, please leave some comments down below on what you thought of any of these pickups. Let us know if you know anything about any of these toys and games, comics, all of this stuff. And do you check out local conventions when you hear about them? If not, wh why not? You should start. Let us know about them because maybe they're close enough that we want to check them out. But uh, give the video a like. Leave those comments down below. Hit the notification bell. Make sure you're subscribed so that you can see what kind of weird stuff we're going to pick up. Hey, how often do you get to go to one convention and pick up this kind of eclectic variety of things? Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public because we've got merchandise over there. Hit us up on the Retro Refresh. And nerdlings, if we like it, we nerd it. And squeeze it. All right, well, I need some money. I gotta go uh, listen to the bubble game, apparently. Honey. Yes. It's 2021. Oh, man. Bye, nerdlings. Bye, nerdlings. Oh, that didn't work. Wow. Oh. <laughs> totally missed. Have fun finding that one. Yeah, it's gonna be covered in cat hair. <laughs> Stuff and things! And this was just Joplin Toy Fair? Mm -hmm. Well. We had a fantastic time at the, I believe it's simply called Joplin Toy Convention. The Correct? Joplin, it's actually Joplin Collector's Expo. That's why I asked you right before we started filming and you said, yep. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't listening to you. Psst. Oh, we'll have fun posing him. <laughs> There's all my marble legends. <laughs> Stuff. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> you've got your cartridge slot up front, and then you've got the disc system. 